Today's theme is manifesting your reality, but in such a way that it does not become driven purely by the personality construct. And I would love for you all to see and realize and experience how actually those are not two contradicting flows. So by those two flows, I mean the personality structure is actually caused by not effortlessly creating a reality, not being in your flow, not being in your joy, not being free. So it may seem that manifesting your reality is a statement of egotism, a statement of, of assertion and the personality being at work. But really, the personality is only at work in the first place. It's only rigid. It's only solid in the first place because we've not given it what it desires in a sense. And by it, I don't really actually refer to the personality structure. I refer to you, you as a being, you as an inseparable plugged in portion of creation. You need Jews, you need flow, you need <clears throat> love, you need appreciation, you need to appreciate your existence and the uniqueness that comes with that. And the uniqueness that comes with that is in the form of desire. It's in the form of passion, the form of inspiration, the form of being psyched, being stoked, being excited. That is the juice that connects you, that makes you actually person transcendent rather than person based. So let's start at the basis at the beginning, in a sense, the beginning being the start of your personality structure. And when I refer to a personality structure, I mean one optional personality structure out of many. And that one personality structure became yours, in other words, became rigid, became tight, became solid, became who you were, who you identified with, precisely because you never learned to offer it the juice of life, to plug it in to all that is. And the way to plug that personality construct in to all that is, is through that joy, it is through that inspiration, it is through that passion that then naturally creates your life, creates or manifests your reality. So when we deprive who we are from being plugged in to the main line, so to speak, plugged into all that is the motherboard that connects everything that exists. And again, being plugged in feels like being turned on, being excited, being in joy, being in peace, being in love, being in appreciation, being in gratitude, being in bliss, being in ecstasy, being inspired, being turned on. When we deprive ourselves from that, also, when we deprive ourselves from that, out of the idea that it's egotistical to plug ourselves into joy, into freedom, into bliss, into expansion, into creation. When we deprive ourselves from being plugged in, that's when the substitute mind kicks in, the substitute servant, which some call the ego. But substitute servant will do. It substitutes for it's a substitute for you not serving you not vibrationally consciously taking care of your flow of being plugged in as often as you can be and so when you learn to not plug yourself into the motherboard of all that is that connects you to the best interests of all beings connected when you are unplugged that's when in that sense shit hits the fan when it becomes messy when the unplugged personality, the personality structure that you're most familiar with, the moment you unplug yourself, that's sort of what lingers as a ghost that is unconnected to all that is, unconnected to its higher self. Caught off from the juice, and then what, was, what does it want to do? It wants to gather that juice from wherever it can, on its own autonomous, seemingly autonomous, unconscious, automatic, conditioned basis. And so it's a personality construct overly identified with and uh, in that sense reckless, needy, believing it has lack. And it does in that sense because we're depriving it of being tapped into the motherboard of all that is. Does that make sense so far? Yes. Okay. Does that experience, 
Is that experience clear to you in your own life? Can you see that in your past, in your present, perhaps? Okay. So all kinds of funny ideas start to exist when you live in a society where everyone learns to unplug themselves. So you get all these ghosts, all these personality constructs, interacting with each other based on lack, reinforcing in each other that lack is the truth of reality, when it's the only thing that can never be, out of everything that can be, it's the only thing that can ever exist, but everyone believes it's the reality, the nature of reality. And so you get these very funny, dysfunctional relationships and experiences. And you start to wish for other people that they don't pluck themselves in. And other people start to wish for you that you don't pluck yourself in. Because when you do, it's sinful. When you do, it's egotistical. When you do, it's arrogant. When you do, it's not spiritual, etc. When you do, you're not obeying your parents. When you do, you're not obeying your religion. When you do, you're free. And being free is dangerous, no? It's very dangerous. It's dangerous to all those that are not plugged in either, seemingly, or that don't know that they are plugged in. And so again, this is a very dysfunctionally, mutually reinforcing way of living as a society that we've done for quite some time. And now it's time to plug ourselves back in. And you cannot plug anyone else back in. You have to plug yourself back in. The only way you can teach others to plug themselves back in is by plugging yourself back in. And when you plug yourself back into the motherboard, your, what's the word, diode, like a little lamp, starts shining. And so it attracts a lot of attention. Wanted or unwanted, doesn't really matter. Whomsoever has something to learn from you will be attracted to that light, like a moth to the flame. They will have something to say about you or think about you, which then reflects back upon their own not being plugged in. But that's a good thing. That's the only way we can plug back in this entire collective is by starting with yourself and shining as brightly as you can, as freely, as independently, as clearly as you can, as lovingly as you can, so that others have a chance to see that it is a possibility and that it's actually personality transcendent when you do. Because when you're plugged in to that juice, to that motherboard, which knows all that is, which is connected to all that is, you are in tune, you are in alignment, and your actions have a natural flow to them, and the way your circumstances move about have a natural flow to them. And that flow <clears throat> is in alignment with all that is. You don't have to think about that. But the very fact that something is inspirational to you makes you feel whole, complete, loved and loving, excited, turned on. Any of you honor basic sort of human integrity, if you will, if you respect other people's free will, then your actions will naturally be in flow, will naturally be in alignment with that. And they'll naturally attract attention, which is the way to share this word, this love, this freedom. It's the way to show. It's the way to teach. The only way to teach is to shine, is to plug yourself in. And again, when you do that, you become more than just that personality structure. Whereas if you're unplugged, then all you know is this little thing rattling around inside your computer, disconnected from the motherboard. But when it's connected, now it functions as a whole computer, as a whole system of different processes happening. Does that make sense? In other words, to be plugged in is not selfish. To be plugged in is not egotistical. We have to get out of that mindset collectively. We have to be willing to get out of that sin-based mindset altogether. We have to be willing to grant other people their highest joy, their highest desire, their highest freedom, and to respect that. Because when we do, we also give ourselves permission to. And vice versa, we need to give ourselves that permission. And when we do, we'll naturally understand how this mechanism works, and we wouldn't want any other any other person person to not be connected. We want everyone to be connected as well. 
at some point you just start to feel the benefits that flow from this. And there is no stopping it. So what are you psyched about right now? What are you excited about? And here's the fun thing, you'll always see <clears throat> that when you're really, really, really in your excitement, in your flow, in your passion, in that space, and I'll explain later how this all ties into manifesting your reality, but this is the basis, this is the most important part of it. When you are tapped into yourself, literally tapped into all of yourself, when you're turned on, when you're riding that wave of resonance or excitement or joy, you are not of this world in the sense that you're not physically focused, you're not physically based, you're not equating reality as we would call reality, like physical circumstantial reality. You're not really seeing that, you're not really equating that with who you are, what you want to be expressing, how you want to express that, how you want to experience yourself. All of that is free from the room that we're in at this point, the checks you need to pay, the stuff that needs to get done. Your flow is independent, not separate, but independent from reality. And what you'll see is that when you're tapped in, you don't see reality. And when you're not tapped in, you see reality. And by reality, I don't mean the truth of all that is. By reality, I just mean very mundanely everyday life, circumstances. Right now, the word reality refers to your circumstances. You don't see circumstances when you're in your flow. When you're in your highest state of flow, you don't see circumstances. You only taste your own excitement, your own joy, your own peace, your own bliss, your own satisfaction, your own overwhelming abundance. You're tapped in. That is your reality. There is no circumstances doesn't mean you cannot appropriately respond to circumstances, but it takes up a minimal portion of your consciousness. The majority of your consciousness is free, is non-physical in that sense, non-physically based. It's in the realm of state of being, in the realm of, in a sense, thoughts or concepts, in the realm of ideas, like abstract movement, movement of the mental body. It is on the level of joy, bliss, energy. Who has noticed that when they are tapped in to this, when they are turned on, when they are in their flow of being psyched, that they are not actually seeing circumstances? Have you noticed that? Just raise your hand if you have. In a sense, it could be all the same to you. It could be taken away from you. It could not be taken away from you. And this is where it becomes different from the personality structure being disembodied or disconnected, trying to manifest this reality as a separate entity. The difference between that and being turned on is that things can be taken away from you or not. It's all the same because you're not focused in on the level, on the realm of circumstances. Or if you are, it's just to notice, just to make observations, just as a mirror that you peek in briefly to, oh, that's interesting reflection. Mm, how does that fit into my flow or not? How does that add to my expansion, to my wisdom, to my clarity, to my love, to my passion? And how can I add my passion to whatever is around me, not by getting it out of me and placing it over there, but by remaining in my own non-physically focused state of energy. Does this make sense so far? The difference between being circumstantially focused into the things and the circumstances and the people and everything that seems to dictate your life. And you can also automatically feel that sense of being a victim of life, which again is being separate, which again is being not plugged in. Therefore, to be attentive to reality, which is what we're all teaching each other, and not you guys, but you know, everyone else, is to be separate. We are constantly reinforcing, don't tap into your joy. Don't tap into your well of abundance. Don't tap into your joy and creativity and bliss. 
because it's selfish. It separates you from everyone else. But the opposite is true. Can you see that? When you don't do that, you're separating yourself. You feel like you're a victim. You're focused 99.9% .9 on your circumstances. That's where you derive your sense of identity from. And you can only do that if there's two things. In your joy, there's only one thing. There's only being. There's only beingness. Your attention turns from duality in that sense to oneness, to presence, to beingness. From things and doing to being. Doesn't mean you're not doing, doesn't mean you're not expressing, but it happens as a natural side effect of a working or being conscious to the level of being, which is one. There's only one beingness, only one being. So when you're tapped in to yourself, when you're tuned into what excites you, what you wish to create, whatever that may be, and believe me, you wish to create something, otherwise you would not be here. It can be very abstract, it can be very abnormal, it can be very unconventional. It may not seem to have any form, any shape. It may not seem to be obvious. It may not seem to have a label given by society. It may not be being a lawyer, being a doctor. It may be something very new, something very abstract, something very undefined. Nevertheless, you are here to constantly co-create. If not, again, you would simply drop dead or your body would. So you're here because you're here to create, you're here to expand, you're here to experience. And the only way to effectively do that is to tune into yourself, to be tapped in, to being psyched, to be free, to be detached from the circumstances so that you can get to know that space, free from circumstances, free from the circumstantial focus. Again, does that make sense so far? Try to get a real feel for that, because that's the most usable thing, the most practicable, the most practical thing is for you to right now tune into the back and forth of circumstance focus, which instantly creates the separation victimization state, or the beingness focus, which instantly gets you tuned into something that excites you, something that is flowing, something that is juicy, something that is beautiful, something that is divine, something that is abundant something that is tuned in, tapped in.